Hello and welcome guys, Eric Farewell coming to you not from Central Florida, but from Hartford, Wisconsin. We're with National Stoll here right now for some bush planes doing really cool things. Bush pilots pushing their airplanes to the edge, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. Today's video is all about the Limitless Paramotor. I know I haven't been around the channel lately, been lots of travel, lots of fun with this business, and getting to explore the country with my family. So today, Neil's going to walk you guys through how you can set up a Limitless Paramotor for you, because no matter how high you are, how short you are, whatever, whatever height you might be, it doesn't matter your height, your weight, it can fit you, your flying style, aerobatics, cross country is designed for you. Make sure you enjoy the video. Make sure you leave a like, a comment, and subscribe, and check us out at National Stoll as well. See you soon. The whole purpose of this is to help you, the pilot, the limitless pilot, utilize the full capability of your paramotor. These are super unique in the paramotor industry. There's nothing else like it right now. You can even custom tailor your machine to the type of flying you're going to do that day. Say you want to rip out, rip around on your free ride 14 and you want to turn as sharp as humanly possible all kinds of weight shift you can set your machine up for that say you're going to go on a cross country you want stability you don't want to feel every single bump you can set your machine up to that so you can set it up for the average type of flying style that you do or the task at hand so you really have a ton of capability with these paramotors and that's what i want to show you today What up, Neil from Aviator. I wanna thank you all for joining me for this Limitless video. What I wanna do is go through a few different things to help you utilize the full capability of your Limitless paramotor. You might be thinking to yourself, Neil, why do you have a dirt bike in a paramotor video? Well, thank you very much for asking. I'm going to tell you right now. After 120 years of motorcycle evolution, things have been developed in processes and learned from racing and riding and all these other things to where the motorcycle has become almost like a fine tailored suit where you don't just grab your dad's suit off the rack in his closet and wear it to your job interview like you're 16 years old or something like that. It'll work, but you'll look like a schlub. With motorcycles, especially off-road motorcycles, dirt bikes, things like that, in order to really utilize the full capability of these machines, you need to spend a little bit of time tailoring it to you. You have all kinds of different adjustments that you can do on these machines. And that's what we're kind of bringing into the paramotor world with Limitless. You can custom tailor these paramotors to fit your exact needs. And let's say you buy a bike out of the dealership. Yeah, you can take it to the track or take it to the trails or something like that and ride it and it'll be okay. But they make tens of thousands of these bikes. So they have to set it up out of the factory for the average rider. But if you're 220 pounds, something like that, you really need to spend a bit of time with these machines to fully utilize what their capability is. So things like, there's a spring here, you set the sag, and what that is, you stand on the bike, measure the distance from the rear axle up to here. There's a specified measurement for each individual bike. You set that to your body weight, and what that does is it sets the head angle. Picture if this bike is squatted like this, this head angle here is gonna be way out here, and that's gonna change the handling a lot. So it's really important to take the time and set a, set a machine up correctly. And you'll get so much more out of the bike than if you just pulled it out of the box and rode it. When I go to a particular area that I'm riding at where I know I'm not going to be doing a lot of straight line going fast, I know I need a lot of nimbleness out of my bike, what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise these fork tubes up into the triple clamps here. And what that'll give me is a lot more nimble handling, especially at this one spot that I go to. I'm barely out of third or fourth gear or whatever. I know I'm going slow, so I, I'm really gonna value that nimbleness and I can sacrifice some of that stability. You've got compression and rebound adjustment, which is how, how hard or how soft that suspension compresses and how fast it goes back to rebound. There's all kinds of different adjustments there. To bring it back to the limitless, we're bringing some of that idea, that concept of custom tailoring your machine to your preferences. You can even custom tailor your machine to the type of flying you're gonna do that day. Say you wanna rip out, rip around on your free ride 14 and you wanna turn as sharp as humanly possible, all kinds of weight shift. You can set your machine up for that. Say you're gonna go out across country, you want stability, you don't wanna feel every single bump. You can set your machine up to that. So you can set it up for the average type of flying style that you do or the task at hand. So you really have a ton of capability with these paramotors and that's what I wanna show you today. So these are the tools you're gonna to wanna to have for working on your total control system on your limitless. This is some spray lubricant. Uh, this is for the Delrin bushings on the swing arms. Just some general food industry lubricant that I had happen to have sitting around in the shop. Uh, with Delrin bushings, it's not super critical what oil you use. Probably the best bet is the three-in-one oil that you see in some like Dollar General, something like that. That's really all you need is just a little bit of oil 
to help lubricate those bushings, keep it from squeaking and making noise and that sort of thing, and kind of improve the smoothness a little bit. But Delrin plastic's a really good solid plastic that works well is a bushing. It kind of is self-lubricating a little bit, but to keep the noise down, you're gonna want some lube. Eight millimeter Allen socket, five millimeter Allen socket. These are just regular Allen sockets. Now I have a, an extended Allen set here and it comes with straight sockets, straight Allen sockets and ball ended. The ball ended ones are what you're gonna need for adjusting your total control system. This particular set I bought off Amazon wasn't super expensive, 40 bucks or something like that. And it's worked out really well for me. Um, if you don't have anything like this, you don't wanna buy anything like this, there's sets of just regular Allens that will have the ball end on it. You can use these as well. I prefer the sock, it's just a little bit easier to work with, but this is also an option, a little bit more economical option as well. As long as you have that ball end, that ball end is important for adjusting the total control system and make it so much easier. Obviously a ratchet for your sockets, if that's the route you're going with. You're gonna to wanna to use a Sharpie for marking your reference point when you're making your adjustments. This is green Loctite retaining compound. It's not quite the standard Loctite where you got red Loctite and blue Loctite. This is a little bit different to where when it comes in contact with metal, it bonds. So when you put it on your, your uh, swing arm bolt, like I'll show you here in a minute, it's about a half hour curing time or so, and it locks it right on there, but you're also able to remove that bolt if you ever need to. It's not like red Loctite where you got to apply heat to it. This is a really good, strong locking compound that you can use on your paramotor, especially for swing arm bolts. It works perfect because you obviously you want to keep those in place. Now I got a scale here for doing our fine adjustments. We're gonna use the metric system as much as it hurts my soul to use that. It's just so much easier, especially for this. And then this is a yardstick. I use this as kind of a reference tool to uh, get our starting point and everything. So it's good to have this. And this is a nice to have tool. If you happen to have an impact, makes pulling the swing arm bolts out a lot easier. If not, one of these or one of these or one of these will work just fine. This is the TCS or total control system. I'll say from now on TCS for short. Obviously you've got up and down, in and out. If you're, if you're limitless no owner, you know this. If you're interested in limitless, this is really one of the main features that we have. Again, so you can custom tailor your paramotor to, your, to suit your flying style or the tasks that you're planning on doing that day. As paramotor pilots, we're not setting autopilot and taking a nap on our machines like we are very involved in the flying that we do yes they they operate like an airplane basically you know airfoil leading edge all that sort of stuff but i look at these more like a dirt bike because you are so connected and you're so personally connected to what is happening with with your aircraft so that's why i really like these machines is can pull some of that knowledge that i have from off-road and a lot of a lot of this stuff applies to paramotors as well it's really quite interesting so again up and down, as you'll see here, this clamp opens up. You can move up and down, in and out independently. Both sides are independent, and I'll show you exactly what that means and what you can do with that independent movement. The swing arms have some adjustment here. Obviously, there's one, two, three, four, five different settings here. This mostly applies when you're on speed bar and that seat board is down and your leg is pushing against that seat board when you're on speed bar, you can offset one of these, these claws, we'll call them, and that'll, that'll give you a bit of torque compensation while you're on speed bar. You can alter the length of the swing arms. Personally, I set my carabiner strap on this center slot here, and then I bring my arms out. You can go up to five holes outwards, and that's, that's the max limit. So that'll give you a bit more arm room. Uh, I find that it's easier to land my paramotor when I'm on this center slot here versus the front slot. So if you're, if you're a heavier pilot and you're having a bit of trouble with it, lean back on you when you're landing. One of the things you can do is, well, we'll show you with the TCS setup. You can raise this up. You can also go five holes out, go to that center slot, and that'll really increase the, increase the landing capability. So these are just some of the things that you can play around with. These clamps here, they open up. You can slide it up and down. You've got the slot right here. That's where you adjust in and out movement. And being that these are independent, you can offset them. First thing I wanna go through with you guys is setting the preload, the desired preload on the swing arm pivot here. So as I'll show you, 
These are pretty stiff. This is how we receive them. The reason you might want something like that is to kind of null out a lot of the feedback that you're getting from the wing. So maybe a newer pilot doesn't want to feel all every single little bump. Um, you can set the preload snug like this, and that'll, that'll null out a lot of that movement and everything that's going on with the paramotor. Another thing you can do with that as well is tighten up your waist strap tight, and that'll limit the movement of the swing arms quite a bit, and it just gives you a little bit more smoother ride. So cross country guys, if you're gonna be in the air for quite a while, that might be something you wanna consider. If you're not worried about weight shift and ripping around and all that sort of stuff, that's, that's the way to go right there. Some of you might want more weight shift, and if your arms are stiff like that, it's much more difficult to get the desired weight shift. So what we'll do is we'll go through the correct procedure for setting the preload on the swing arms. So I'm gonna use the impact with the eight millimeter Allen. Like I said, you don't necessarily need to do an impact. It's just, it just makes it a little bit easier. So make sure you get full engagement in the bolt. Zip this thing out. All right, so taking a look inside here. We've got the Delrin bushing. The inner Delrin bushing is obviously your bigger one. The outer one is the smaller one. So this is an M10 bolt, it's super strong. Test rating on it's like 700 kilos or something like that of lateral pull. <laughs> kind of knocks some of that old thread locker out of there. Now, I'm gonna take my bushings. So my spray lubricant. Don't need much, just a little bit. Wipe it on the bushings. And put the bushings back on the swing arm. And take some of this excess lube and throw some on here just for good measure. You'll see that this bushing here is compressed a little bit from the washer. So we're gonna go ahead and put that, that little recess on the outside like that. Take the bolt through. Now, this is where you wanna use your green Loctite. Green Loctite's gonna hold in place. The blue is not strong enough and the red is too strong. So I'm gonna lay out a decent amount, something like that. And then what I'm gonna do, just kinda spread it around on the bolt. And as I said, as it comes into contact with metal, it starts curing. So thread this back in. Make sure your bushing stays on that little shoulder there, like that. And I'm gonna zip this bolt in. Okay. Now you're gonna wanna use either a regular, regular Allen or an Allen socket to get the preload exactly where you want it. My preference is, and this is all by feel. So as you can see, it does move freely, but there is a little bit of resistance. That's about what I like. Something like that. It works pretty good. Moves through the whole travel nice and easy. Doesn't make any noise. Then I'm gonna let that set for about a half hour or so. All right, now we're gonna adjust the total control system. Now I have a bare frame here so we can get a little bit better shot to show you guys exactly how I'm doing this. You don't need to disassemble your whole paramotor to do this. You can leave the hoop on and everything. You gotta work around it a little bit, but it's, it's pretty easy to do. So I'm gonna pull the swing arms. Set that aside. Stick that in there so I don't lose it. Same with the other side. First step I wanna do, <coughs> grab my yardstick. We're gonna set our reference point. Again, using the metric system. The way I do it is I'll line the bottom of the yardstick up with this tube right here. That way, when you're doing your reference, you're consistent every time. I reference off the bottom of the total control clamp, and we are at 719 right now. It should be, both sides should be within a millimeter of each other, something like that. It should be pretty close. I'm gonna take a Sharpie, especially if, if your frame is, you know, you've had it for a year or something like that, you're gonna to wanna to remark. It doesn't hurt to throw another marker on there just for good measure. And then come around to the other side and do the same thing. There's my reference here. Yep, that's 719. Leave a mark at the bottom of the clamp for reference. So, 
The reason you mark that is for whatever reason you want to go back to the original settings, you know exactly where it's at. First step, grab the five millimeter ball end, Allen. So you've got four screws, two on top, two on bottom, that go into this slot here. And these are just set screws to lock this shaft in place. When you're using a ball ended Allen, be careful not to pop the ball end out of the socket head of the screw. Cause that, that's kind of the downside of the ball ended Allen. It's a little bit easier to round that out. Loosen up all four. I'm gonna wanna back out all four of them about 3 16 of an inch, something like that. What you need to do that for is to get the screws out of the way of the slot. Otherwise you won't be able to pull the shaft out. So there's that, same on the bottom. All right, shaft comes right out, set that aside. Depending on whether you're running a gear drive or a belt drive is gonna determine which side the longer shaft is on. So this is a Moster configuration here. So this longer shaft is gonna be on the right side because you're gonna to wanna to put that, this shaft out a little bit further for torque compensation. You want a little bit more travel on this side. So for a Moster, left side's gonna be the short shaft, right side's gonna be the long shaft. Same thing, loosen up your set screws. Slide the shaft out. Next step is adjusting the total control clamps. If we get lost for whatever reason, we can go back to the original setting because we marked it with a Sharpie. What I'm gonna do with this particular paramotor is I'm gonna set up more of a student type of pilot, maybe a bigger pilot that has a little bit more arm room, more of a normal launching characteristic, doesn't want that push from the higher thrust center line. The way I'm gonna set this paramotor up is with a little bit of torque compensation offset, and I'm gonna bring the total control up, and what that'll do is bring the carabiners and the swing arms up a bit more above the thrust center line, and that'll change the launch characteristics. Uh, it'll keep it from going forward as much. It gets that a little bit more under control, slows that down a little bit. I'm using the regular standard uh, standard ended Allen, not the ball end, because I, I don't want to round these out. There's no need to use the ball end for this one. So loosen these up. So one thing you need to be aware of is these clamps fit snugly around these two tubes here. It has to, you, you want to eliminate any potential of movement. So when you're cr cranking down on these, it's going to kind of squeeze these tubes a little bit and that'll keep everything locked in place and solid. So in order to loosen it up, I'm gonna back these off eh, until about the head of the screw turns out. Same with this side. One more. If you are having a bit of trouble getting these loose, one thing you can do, take a rubber mallet, a uh, piece of wood, whatever, and tap these screws. That'll pop that off. And then normally, you can just either grab this like that, or another option is to, you can get a straight Allen and kind of pull on this screw here, and just a little bit, just to get it to pop out of them tubes there. But you got all that movement. You can go as high as you want to with this, and it's completely safe. You're not going to hurt anything so don't be afraid to go all the way up if you wanted to if you've got the arm room to do it and you want to see what it's like to fly it like that and you might like it a lot of the machines in slalom racing these guys are 130 pounds using a twin cylinder uh, zeus 300 so almost all of their machines were set as high as humanly possible with two centimeters of torque compensation offset. And we'll, again, we'll get into that torque compensation offset here in a second. What I'm gonna do, take my scale, I'm gonna go two centimeters from my reference. So two centimeters there, and kind of snug it up, bring these in. <clears throat> now, in a crisscross pattern, I'm gonna tighten this up. I found the easiest way to get the, get the shaft back in there because as you can see, these machined bores, when they're machined, they do both of these clamp halves at the same time, so the bore is identical. So to crank it down, crisscross pattern, 
You shouldn't have any trouble getting the shaft back in. So I'm gonna snug these up pretty good. I don't have a torque spec on these. Just kind of do an even feel. Again, crisscross pattern. There, like that. Pop the shaft back in. This setup that I'm doing right now is for a Moster. This is just an example of how you can set yours up. The right side total control will be a bit higher than your left side if you want to add a bit more offset for, for torque compensation. With offsetting the total control, what that does is, if you know, you'll notice it um, if you're on a factory R especially, when you go full throttle in, in a hotter wing especially, it's even more pronounced. It kind of has a tendency to want to do this. It's turning on this same roll axis. It's not twisting, it's just turning. So when you offset the total control, it kind of brings that back into alignment. So that's what I'm gonna set up with this. The baseline that I found for the shaft, for how far out you wanna go, and again, this becomes personal preference. If you want more weight shift, you're gonna bring both sides out further than, than you had it before. If you want more stability, bring them both in. I'm gonna set this one up in particular, two centimeters out. And this is the general baseline that we set them at. There's about two centimeters right there. There's a way to tighten this shaft down correctly to make sure that everything's sitting flush and snug. Take your ball ended Allen. You're gonna bring one of these screws in until it's almost touching and kind of feel it. Now, take this shaft jiggle it back and forth and what you're doing is you're finding the bottom of this machine slot here that way if you have it cocked in there potentially this may shift a little bit and then your screws could potentially loosen up so rock it back and forth like that and that'll get everything nice and seated honestly the this is a very solid system to where really only need technically you only need one of these screws to be in here and it won't come out it's just one clamping force will keep it in there but obviously don't do that tighten up all four of them and you'll know you won't have a problem so let's set up the other side it's gonna be the same procedure it's just gonna be a different setting so we raised the other side up two centimeters this side we're gonna go 13 millimeters. So there'll be a total of seven millimeters offset. The more power the engine has, the bigger the offset needs to be. So Zeus 300, Pliny 303, you're probably gonna wanna be about two centimeters total where Moster, you don't quite need that much. It's not necessary. So seven millimeters will do it fine. So this part popped out. Okay, clamps are loose. Did you hear that little snap? That was it popping out between the tubes. I'm gonna set this one to 13, 13 millimeters, so we will have a total of seven millimeter offset. Because remember, we set the other side up a total of two centimeters or 20 millimeters. So we'll go 13 on this side, total of seven offset. Didn't think you'd be doing math today, did you? Okay, there's that. Same thing, crisscross pattern. Slide the shaft back in. Left side is gonna be closer to the center for belt drive torque compensation. Same thing, wiggle the shaft back and forth, find the bottom of the slot. There it is right there. Okay, go over everything one more time. Okay, so what we just did is set up for a Moster 185. We're gonna go with a bit higher total control system. Again, to get that uh, pitch forward a little bit more stabilized, slow that down a little bit, 
and give it a bit of torque compensation offset. It's gonna give it a little bit more stability with this uh, TCS being up higher. Now, if you wanted something that was more weight shifty, more performance, more fun, more take my free ride out, you would drop the total control down maybe a half centimeter, full centimeter. The thing you need to be aware of, that's, you can go as high as you want with this and you're gonna be completely safe. When you go, go lower, that really needs to be more for experienced pilots. So if you're dropping it a centimeter and a half, almost two centimeters down, you really wanna be a fairly experienced pilot to be doing that. But what that's gonna do is because that is lower on your back, you have more mass up top here, where up here, not as much mass. So that's gonna assist you in your weight shift when you have it down lower. You can also bring your shafts out that much more and that's gonna give you more weight leverage. And then you can configure your torque compensation into that as well. So you can offset it. You can widen, widen it, but still offset your weight so you have that torque compensation, but also more weight shift authority because it's out further from you. You'll have more leverage. I'd also like to mention the harness adjustment bar. This mostly comes into play for launching. What I've been doing is, especially for student machines, is I will bring it up to this third hole. Makes it a little bit easier to push back against the motor when you're launching. On my personal machine, I even have my harness adjustments bar offset one hole. It makes it feel more even when I'm on full throttle with my factory R. You have less tendency to want to go like this on your roll access, and it makes it feel a bit more even when you offset this bar as well. So you have that option. You can go all the way up if you want. You can go all the way down if you want. Mostly comes into play with launching. Once you're in the air, not so much, unless you're really offsetting this bar. One topic I want to discuss real quick while I have y'all's attention is high thrust center line. Forgive me now for my artistic abilities. I admit they are absolute garbage, so bear with me. High thrust center line is pulled from the competition racing side of paramotors. Reason being that when you are on speed bar, you decrease your angle of attack. So I'm gonna do my best to draw a paraglider, paramotor wing on full speed bar. Basically might even be a little bit more like that to make it correct. Again, forgive my artistic abilities. As you can see, wings pointing down like that, but you've got this propeller like this. It's kind of fighting itself. Unlo it's pushing upwards, unloading the wing, losing speed because you're not maximizing the wing loading you potentially have. They're kind of fighting with each other. So from competition experience, they have found that going Upright is humanly possible. Pushing against the risers, lines riding on the cage the whole nine yards, being as upright as possible with that thrust center line being as high as possible. That, that prop, as you can see, sorry my center line is not even close to center, but that prop pushing down, full speed bar, you're going like, I have to move my hand like this. Like this, you're pulling down on that wing, loading that wing, maximizing the amount of speed that you can get out of that wing for competition. Pushing like this, loading the wing, increasing the stability of the wing, or less likely to collapse. All of those factors come into play because you are loading that wing that much more. Now, it's a bit of getting used to for people that are used to maybe a lower thrust center line machine where it leans back, it's, it's, you know, you get on the gas and it doesn't push forward very much, all those sorts of things. It's a bit of getting used to. It's, it's, it's almost unnerving at first when you see those, those lines riding up against your cage. I can promise you right now, you're good. You would have to be like this. This is your propeller right here, let's say. And your brake line would have to be about probably 12 inches too loose to even come close to that propeller. So if your paramotor is like that in relation to your wings, something has gone horribly wrong. Lines in the props probably the least of your worries. You're probably off power at this point, I would hope. That is some horrible drawing. 
<laughs> I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. I hope you learned something about your paramotor. The whole purpose of this is to help you, the pilot, the limitless pilot, utilize the full capability of your paramotor. These are super unique in the paramotor industry. There's nothing else like it right now. If you have any additional questions, um, potentially we're gonna do a video series on more, more things about limitless. I think there's a couple other topics that we can cover that would really help you guys out in understanding your machine. Uh, leave a comment down below on what you would like to see. Some questions that maybe if you're interested in limitless, you'd like to know about limitless, uh, I can answer them in the YouTube comments. Uh, my name on YouTube is Perspective one so you'll see me bopping around in there a little bit. Like this video, share this video. Um, I will post it on the Limitless Facebook group, the Limitless Owners Facebook group. So if you haven't joined that yet, please join. We'll share some information on there. I'd like to share different setups that people come up with with their Limitless machines. Put it on the Facebook group. We can all kind of compile a bunch of data together and come up with some pretty cool settings on these machines. Uh, send me an invite on there and I'll put you on there. I'm also working on a guide that will have pictures to supplement some of the some of the things that we've gone over with this as well. That will be available on the Limitless Owners Group. We'll post it in a few other places. We'll post it in the description of this video as well. I hope you all had a really good time and I'll see y'all later.